Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time all around. Welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a pro copywriter for about the past seven years. Today's video is a direct answer to a question that I received on a previous Freelance Friday video. If you don't make it to the end of the video where I say this explicitly, if you have any questions that you would like to me to think about or address in a future video, feel free to comment that down below. I can't guarantee that I'll answer every question, but I think so far I've been pretty good about addressing them all. So feel Feel free to comment, that'd be awesome. And as always, like this video if you like it and subscribe. That helps me to uh, build up my channel slowly but surely. So B Updater commented, hi Carrie, your content is awesome. Love that spelling. Can you please make a video on how you start writing because it feel very difficult to concentrate and sit in one place and write the content. I think that there are a lot of personality traits or like workflow habits that are conducive or more conducive to freelancing. And one of those things is focus. Just sit down and force yourself to be on task at any given time. That is luckily one thing that I don't struggle with. I've always been very good at kind of the self-discipline of meeting deadlines, being very strict on a schedule, and I know that when I sit down to do something, I will be committed to doing that until it's done. So I don't know if I taught myself that early on or that's just kind of my like type A personality. If you're interested in a deeper dive into who the heck I am and my personality, I have this video about my personality type, which I recommend you go watch. Anyway, the struggle of writer's block is pretty stereotypical of just you sitting and staring at your screen going like, what do I do next? In, a, in terms of how you teach yourself to do that, I kind of done some soul searching, I thought, what do I do besides the fact of just sit down and do it that I could help to offer advice on that? So here we go. My first tip is just to kind of be thinking about the content in the back of your mind for several days before you actually start writing it. Some people take different approaches on this where they might like outline the first day and then they write and then they rewrite and then they edit and then they deliver. So in that case, it let's say you have a five day delivery period, you might actually be starting on the person's order the next day and just working on it incrementally to get through it over the course of that five day delivery period. I personally don't like that model at all. I don't like the, the stress of things not being done. So to me, if I start a project four days ago, even if I'm on task and I'm on schedule, that creates stress for me and that makes me not feel like I'm actually getting anything done. I have the exact opposite approach. I like to sit down, start writing it, write it, proofread it, and deliver it in one sitting. If I can even not get up in the middle of that, that is my premium workflow. I just let it kind of stew in my head. I don't actively think about it, but I make sure that I've, it's there, <laughs> it's happening even if I don't know it. So right after I receive the order, I always go through the buyer requirements to read all of the information up front. And that's good for two reasons. Number one is that I can go through and make sure that I don't have any questions and that I can address that need for any extra information or clarification right up front with the buyer. Um, so that is part of like my buyer communication process to make sure that they know I've received the order, I don't have any questions, I'm good to go, or I have questions you need to answer back to me so that I will be successful on this order with more information from you right at the beginning. And then number two is once I've read through that, again, whether I'm super aware of it or not, I'm thinking about it for the next five days. In three or four days, when I come back to that order and I'm ready to write it and sit down and do it, it's not new. I've already had a couple ideas pop up. I've kind of framed some of the ways that I want to go about discussing this and talking about this and selling the concept. And so I think that getting it in your brain will help eliminate some of that writer's block because you've already done that sit there and stare at your paper kind of brainstorming in the back of your mind over the past couple days. At this point in my career, it's just like background noise. I know I'm thinking about it. I have kind of an internal plan of what's coming up in my next couple of days of work. But if you need a little more structure, every day until you sit down to write the content, check in with it. Just sit down, reread the brief, just conceptualize a little bit and refresh and become more comfortable and familiar with the content so that again, when you sit down to write it, it's not new. You're not approaching this for the first time, but you've actually had some time to conceptualize. And again, if you need to take that one step further, go ahead and start making an outline. Maybe for you, the workflow is that you do need to start a couple days ahead of time to get the framework built to kind of process through do I wanna go this direction? No, that's not gonna work. Do I wanna try this direction? No, that's not gonna work. And see where your content's gonna go. So 
That's my first tip. The next is to practice a lot, which is hard to do, but it helps so much. I know that my speed as a writer has increased exponentially. I am such a fast writer now. I can blast through content. And compared to where I started, I was just a quick writer. Like I said, I've, I've always been able to sit down and do things promptly and efficiently without wasting a lot of time. But just having the practice of knowing my options. I don't, it's like anything else. I'm a musician as well, so I, in my head, liken this to playing the oboe a lot too. Um, you just have a skill set. You have the tools to pull from. As an oboist, I know all of my scales. I know all of my arpeggios. I've played all the articulation patterns. So putting all those things together, that is a skill that is so much faster for me and I can like rework all of those little components quickly and efficiently versus a new player who doesn't have that toolbox. It just takes longer to figure out how to work all the, the foundational skills into something cohesive. Did that make sense? I don't know. That's how I feel in my brain. Again, it just comes down to having those foundational skills and not even, not repeating yourself, not following a script. That's not at all what I'm saying, but there are certain phrase patterns that I use. Um, there are certain descriptive styles. There are kind of, I know how to frame the format of the description. So all of those things, again, is just like scales when I play my instrument. It's just putting those building blocks together into something specific. And now that I've been practicing that and doing it over and over and over again, it just comes to me more quickly. So even if you don't have a lot of briefs in your personal workflow right now, I recommend that you just create them yourself. Just pretend to be your own buyer and make sure that you have some experience practicing that. Um, and just go online if you're, if you're someone like me who writes primarily e-commerce descriptions, it's the easiest thing on the planet. Just go to any website, just ignore the copy that they have and just look for the actual facts about the product and practice writing it. And that's something you can practice on your own. But I think you can do that for any kind of writing. Just come up with a fake brief. Just create it for you and practice, practice, practice. Not only for things like grammar, and punctuation spelling and the basic foundational credibility, but also just building that toolbox so that you know what works and what doesn't, and you can just put those pieces together a little faster. Quick tip three, because this video is getting really long, so I'm sorry. Make sure that your office space is conducive to focus. Make sure that you have a space without distraction. Here's my video with my office setup. Now that I have an office, I love it. I feel like it helps me be even more productive. Just make sure that you love your space, you're comfortable, you're focused. I love to listen to instrumental music when I work so that there's no distraction of other words in my head, but I'm also not just dying in silence alone by myself. The space that you give yourself, I think, will reflect the kind of mindset that you have going into a project. So keep that in mind. Tip number four is just to get started right off the bat. Your first sentence typically is the hardest thing to write. Usually I struggle there the most because that's what's going to set the tone for everything else to follow. Just start writing. I know that's like the most cliche advice on the planet. And if you don't like it, you can go back and fix it. God, I sound like such a cliche, a cliche right now. The other thing I do is if I know that I don't like a word or a phrase, but I just, I can't cross over figuring out what I do want to say. I'll just put it in all caps when I write it so that that's clear to me when I go back to proof. Red flag alert, this this phrase or this word is not right. It's not going to stay, but I just need to get past it, keep writing more, and then I'll come back and figure out what the heck I did want to say. So using that as a tool, I think it's really effective. It allows you to put things down and not be committed to thinking that's the best you can do. So all caps is a great solution. Yeah. I think it works well. Yeah. So hopefully this is helpful. I feel like I just rambled, which is what all of my videos are now. Try these tips. If they work for you and resonate with you, that's great. If they don't, you gotta find something else that's gonna work for you. But in terms of being a successful freelance writer, your ability to sit down and write promptly and efficiently are gonna be two really important kind of fundamental skills you're gonna need to have in order to be successful. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to meet deadlines, you're not gonna be able to work through your entire workload without any late deliveries, and you're also just not gonna make enough money per hour for your time if you're constantly sitting and stewing and not getting things done. But hopefully this just gives you a second opinion to start thinking about your own workflow, your own work life, and how to make freelancing fit you. Please be sure to like and subscribe. As always, um, comment down below if you have a question for a future Freelance Friday video. For now, let's get back to work.